Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing my birthday book haul. I'm filming this a little bit late. So I got some birthday money and so I got a fair few books with it. I also got gifted a book um, via like a wish list on a book page on Facebook joined like their birthday spreadsheet they put out a post on my birthday with my wish list in and all the the others who have their birthday on the same date as me um and it's up to people if they want to gift anyone anything or not and I got gifted a book plus right at the start of the new year um I bought two books I'll explain why um and other and another two books from Tesco that were like end of 2023 and so I've kind of just clubbed them together just because it's so much easier. Okay to start off with I have two copies of Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. The whole reason why I have two is because the first one appear came um in a weird way damaged. Um like you see that um and also let me find it um and like this is like a separate page like it matches the text and everything um and another let me find it so you probably can't tell this on screen but so this is st stuck on so i stuck this on um but i opened this book originally and tiny scraps of paper came out and then i flicked to these pages and there was like lines of text missing and these like correlated so I did some gluing. I asked for a refund on Amazon and obviously and at the time I was like am I would I still want to read this because there's also like a massive rip at the bottom of one page like I'm not joking I don't know where it is um let me get my finger under but also it's like stuck down um so I didn't know how I'd feel about that. So I got a refund in the form of a new one. And now I've re received a new one. Part of me likes the charm of my kind of broken one. And I don't know why. I don't know what to do with my spare copy though. That's the problem. Then I'm gonna go off the ones that I actually ordered and then I'll go to the extras. Then I got The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. Um, oh, I never said what, um, Six of Crows is, I know most of you will probably have heard of it, but it says criminal pr prodigy Kaz Brecker has been offered a chance at a deadly heist, break into the ice court, a military stronghold that had never been breached, and retrieve a hostage whose knowledge could change Grisha magic forever. To succeed would mean riches beyond Kaz's wildest dreams, but he can't pull it off alone. A convict with a thirst for, a re for revenge, a sharpshooter who can't walk away from a wager, a runaway with a privileged past, a spy known as the Wrath, a heart render using her magic to escape the slums, a thief with a gift for unlikely escapes, six dangerous outcasts, one impossible heist, together they might just be unstoppable if they don't kill each other first. Um, and this is book one in the series. Um, but yeah, The Ballad of Never After, the second in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series, I should probably come closer. So this one follows Evangeline after the ending of like the book. So the first book follows Evangeline as she makes a deal with the Prince of Hearts called Jax um, because there's a wedding taking place and she doesn't want it to take place. Anyway, we follow this whole thing of she gets accused of stuff in the first book and then gets betrayed at the end. And basically it's kind of following along with that and how like she's grasping like who she is um and trying to get her happily ever after um but when new danger has come in they need to she needs to form a partnership with the person who betrayed her however there's outside like an outside thing that's actually causing more harm which is the whole reason why he's not the most hated person and there's just like spells that have been cast on her and whatnot. I can't explain too much because obviously this is following along from the first book. And if you haven't read the first book, you this would be an absolute spoiler if I have to actually read the full thing of what it said. But I hope that I've summarised it enough is all I'm going to say. Then I picked up Crossed by Emily McIntyre. I love how it's like floppy pages. 
Um, so this is a retelling of, oh my god, what is it a retelling of? This, oh, this is a retelling of the, um, Hunchback of Notre Dame, I believe. Yes. Which actually I didn't realise, um, it's probably not the one that I, I would have probably picked up a different one instead, just because Hunchback of Notre Dame was not a favourite movie, in fact, I basically don't watch it, I think I tried to rewatch it re fairly recently and I think I just skipped through parts, but you know what, it was £3. That's the thing, so Ballad of Never After was 6 Also I'd like to point out this is the price before taking their like 5% off on four selected books. Like if you pick four or more in like a certain, that fall under the promotion. Um, but this would have been three pounds. I've had that, I think I've had that um, reimbursed or at the very least I've obviously got the new one. But it says, but yeah, it's literally just a retelling of The Hunchback. Um, and so if you kind of know that, then I don't need to. Just a retelling. Then I bought a book from an author that I have been wanting to buy from for the longest of times. And if you saw that cover, you will have some clue as to what I've bought. And it is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I have not read an Emily Henry book, um, but I really want to. I've heard such great things. Um, and it does sound like something that's like right up my street. Um, and it says, Nora is a cutthroat literary agent at the top of her game. Her whole life is books. Charlie is an editor with a gift for creating bestsellers and he's Nora's work nemesis. Nora has been through enough breakups to know she's the men, she's the one men date before finding their happily ever after. To prevent another dating dud, Nora's sister persuades her to swap her city desk for a month's holiday in Sunshine Falls. In a small town straight out of a romance novel, but instead of meeting sexy lumberjacks, handsome doctors or cute bartenders, Nora keeps bumping into Charlie. She's no heroine, he's no hero. So can they make a page out so can they take a page out of an entirely different book? Obviously this is gonna be an enemies to lovers thing, and I think it is. Um it's fairly short. Um at like 370 pages. Yeah, basically. In her acknowledgement, she just thanks V Schwab. I just noticed that. Um, but yeah, I really want to get into Emily Henry. Um, this was the cheapest book, um, on Amazon that she had. Um, so yeah. Then I got The Family Remains by Lisa Jewell. So this is the second in the Family Upstairs, um, duology. Um, so you do need to read the first one before you read this one because this follows along the same storyline. Um, but it says, early morning on the fourth shore of the River Thames, a bag of bones is discovered. Human bones. D.I. Samuel Owusu quickly sends the bag for forensic examination. The bones are those of a young woman killed by a blow to the head many years ago. Also inside the bag is a trail of clues which lead D.I. Owusu to a mansion in Chelsea, where 30 years previous, three people lay dead while a baby upstairs waited for someone to pick her up. Four deaths, an unsolved mystery, a family whose secrets can't stay buried forever. I didn't realise this sequel existed until not that long ago, um, but I'm really excited to see how the story unfolds. So we will be following along from the detective's point of view. He wasn't in the first book, not that I remember. Um, I haven't read the first one in ages, it's currently back home, so maybe I should probably wait till I go back home to read the first one to refresh my mind, because I remember enjoying that book a lot. Final book in that Amazon haul of myself is an absolute chunker. Absolute chunk. I will not be reading, like, the series fully in order, um, but it is House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. So this is an absolute chunker because it is 800 pages um, before the um, epilogue, before the um, acknowledgements. Um, and I know that it's set in like the same like world as Akatar 
and throne of glass it says bryce quinlan loves her life every night is a party and bryce is going to savor all the pleasures lunathian also known as crescent city has to offer but when a brutal murder shakes the very foundations of the city bryce's world comes crashing down two years later bryce still haunts the city's most notorious nightclubs but seeking only oblivion now then the murderer attacks again and when an infamous fallen angel hunt athala is assigned to watch her every footstep bryce knows she can't forget any longer as bryce and hunt fight to unravel the mystery and their own dark pasts the threads they tug ripple through the underbelly of the city across warring continents and down to the deepest levels of hell where things that have been sleeping for millennia are beginning to stir is hell supposed to be with two hours because it's only one in this back um but my thought is is that i wouldn't have bought this with my own money but it was with christmas money well birthday money um so yeah it's the biggest book that i bought i have no clue where i'm gonna put all these books they've literally been sat in this box for the past couple of days whilst i've been waiting to film this video but i've just not had time technically i didn't really have time now because i should be sleeping but that's besides the point um then the book that i got gifted was babel by rf quang um this obviously made its rounds i would not have bought this with my own money at least not for a while because it wasn't like fully jumping out to me but it was on my wish list um like my amazon wish list um so it says oxford 1836 the city of dreaming spires it is the center of all knowledge and progress in the world and at its and at its heart is babel oxford university's prestigious royal institute of translation the tower from which all the power of the empire flows. Orphaned in Canton and brought to England by a mysterious guardian, Robin Swift thought Babel a paradise until it became a prison, but can a student stand against an empire? Um, I didn't really know what this book was about. I just heard stuff about it, so it was on my list. I haven't really chosen small books, have I? Anyway, so I also bought The Drift by cj tudor so i had meg talk about this i think i was watching just an old video of hers from like earlier in like from like mid 2023 um and she just enjoyed this book i think it was like her her scavenger hunt um but it says an overturned coach full of students all of them are trapped a stranded cable car full of strangers one of them is dead an isolated chalet full of friends soon there'll be enemies outside a snowstorm rages inside each group a killer lurks but that's not their only problem why is no rescue coming what are they trying to escape from and who are the terrifying whistlers um it follows like three points of yeah like it follows three stories um and i just thought it sounded interesting but I wasn't going to pick up the book straight away. And then I just so happened to go into Tesco. Um, and so I thought it's a sign. So I picked it up. I know. At the same time, I also bought I Know It's You by Susan Lewis. This just came up randomly on uh, Amazon when I was doing like my buy, when I was buying all the actual books off of Amazon. Um, and I thought, oh, that sounds like a good one. That sounds interesting. I'm not going to buy it now because um, it was still like £8 on there. Um, and then I saw it in Tesco. But it says, the first chapter of a manuscript arrives on publisher Marina Forster's desk. She assumes it's just another novel by another aspiring writer. As the chapters arrive one by one, Marina is convinced they are about, they are about her past. There's only one person who, who can know everything about the scandal, the trial and the trauma that nearly broke her. There is one story that should never be told and Marina is so desperate she will do anything to stop it getting out. In some ways this actually now makes me think of um, Yellowface and the fact that this, and the fact that the um, main character in Yellowface, is it Yellowface? Please tell me it's Yellowface. Um, tries to do everything to keep the secret hidden and this person is about to do the same. I only just made that connection but it just sounds interesting 
like a, it's a psychological thriller clearly and then the final two books oh my god i can get rid of the box is mixed signals and in the weeds by bk borison these are books two and three in the love light series so the first storms love light farms which i read um around christmas time and i did say in that video or a video that i would buy books two and three just because i felt like i would probably get along with them more because they're not because i wasn't going into the books expecting something because with love light farms i was expecting more christmas stuff and it just kind of fell flat on that front um but in the weeds says a grumpy farmer a no sense a no-nonsense social media influencer, a small town of busybodies and four very cute kittens. Evelyn St. James isn't the kind of woman you forget. Beckett Porter certainly hasn't. One incredible weekend in Maine and he's officially a man distracted. So when she suddenly appears on his farm as part of a social media contest, he's confused. He had no idea that the sweet and sexy woman he met at a bar is actually a global phenomenon social media influencer Evelyn St. James. Feeling disconnected from her work and increasingly unhappy, Evelyn is trying to find her way back to something real. She returns to the last place she was happy, Love Light Farms and the tiny town of Inglewild. It has absolutely nothing to do with the hot farmer she spent two incredible nights with. Nothing at all. We can all say we've been anticipating Beckett's book. Um, and then Mixed Signals says, a bash, a bash full man who can rock a Hawaiian de a Hawaiian shirt, a hopeful and dreamy bakery owner, enough sweets to give you a cavity and your favourite Inglewild residence. Layla Dupree has given up on love, apparently owning the bakery at Inglewild's most romantic destination does not help one's love life, despite her best efforts. All she wants is a partner who gives her butterflies, not someone who goes out at dinner and leaves her with a check. Caleb Alvarez can never make it past the first date, which has nothing to do with his long-term crush on the hot bakery owner, who serves him coffee every morning. Nothing at all. After saving Layla from a date gone bad, he has a simple proposition. One month of no strings dating. He'll do his best to renew her faith and love while she rates his romantic game. It's a win-win situation. But there's one thing they haven't considered. The chemistry between them is red hot. Will Caleb be the secret ingredient that Layla has been missing? Which one's Caleb? Okay, so it's just taken me ages to look. Um, but he is from the sheriff's department. He was deputy. And actually that does make sense now. I love how I've forgotten. To be fair, he was a minor character. But it's cute how he's now not. Um, but that explains who he is. Jesus Christ. Um, those are all the books that I have bought. Let me know if you've read any of them, what your personal rating is, any books you'd recommend, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.